I would never condemn somebody for coming from Bangladesh or coming from anywhere else in the world. The Gypsy Roma traveller community went after the LGBT community. They also went after the destruction of all people with disabilities. Robert has reminded us of the need for unity of all people, all groups, all organisations in opposing fascism at every turn. And that is why we're here today, because there are apparently fascists on the streets of London today. All our communities are here, Jewish, Muslim, Black, Asian, all ranges, I would imagine, of political opinion. And we're here because we oppose racism in any form. And we're opposed to the opposed to the politics of the denigration of minorities and people from particular countries. I would never condemn somebody for coming from, ba for coming from Bangladesh or coming from anywhere else in the world. Because that only leads to fear, it leads to division, and it leads to a horrible place for those people that do come from those communities. But when you start to look behind the headlines, read what the media says and the analysis they give of the, their quotes, problem of refugees within our society, I then think to myself, of the people I've met in Calais, the people I've met who have traveled by all manner of means, bus, truck, lorry, walk, rail, anything they could do in order to get from Afghanistan to Calais in order to try and achieve a place of safety. They're desperately hungry, they're desperately poor, they're desperately frightened, and they just want somewhere secure to live, free from police harassment and free from fascist attacks. And then they use whatever means they can to get in a boat to cross the channel and hope they're going to be able to survive in this country. They are the victims of the war in Afghanistan, just like others are the victims of the war in Libya and Syria, Iraq, and so many other places. In a century's time, the heroic journeys these people have made, traversing the whole continent, evading police, dodging barbed wire entanglements, just trying to get to a place of safety. In a hundred years' time, their journeys will be taught in school books and said how brilliant and heroic they are. What an achievement it was. In the same way that, quite rightly, the work of Harriet Tubman in uh, running the Underground Railroad to get slaves out of the slave states to the north in the USA is now a revered part of American history. Can't we just fast forward and start with a sense of humanity to these people that are victims of wars that this country has put a great deal of money into? So let's look instead at safety for those people and not this sort of pan-European attack on people who are victims often of pan-European policies. I just, I've got only got a couple of minutes, so I just want to say one other thing. This um, question of fighting racism is to me an absolutely obvious one. You fight racism because racism is an absolute evil in any form whatsoever in our society. So you don't have to tolerate other people. I hate the word tolerate other people. You have to respect people and, and admire their differences or whatever they might be. But it's not a contradiction to also bring up the economic questions that we're faced with at the moment. This week, Parliament had the opportunity to pass a very simple amendment to the government's programme, which was to end the two-child benefit cap. That would have taken several hundred thousand children out of the most desperate poverty and would have cost about 1.4 billion to do. They voted it down. And that is to the shame of Parliament. 
I will always vote to end that cap. I will always vote to try and bring justice and reasonable standards of living to all children within our society. But it's also about wages. It's also about housing. It's also about education. It's also about privatization of the health service. If a government, any government anywhere in Europe, fails to deal with the issue of the crisis of falling living standards, the crisis of poverty, the millions that access food banks all across this continent, then the blame culture against minorities and refugees and others will take over. That is the atmosphere in which the far right and the fascists thrive. So our campaign is yes to oppose racism in any form, but it's also for a more decent, more equal, more uh, inclusive society that gives hope to all people in all circumstances. That is what unites us together. And over, I'll finish on this, over the last uh, six months particularly, but over the last years especially, many of us have marched because we want peace. We want to see an end to the killing of Palestinian people. We want to see an end to the war in, the war in Gaza. We want to see peace come there. But those marches have brought people together from a huge range of communities, societies, and all over the country. That is the political movement that will beat fascism. That is the political movement that will bring peace. That is the political movement to bring justice and equality. Thank you very much.